A genuine question. Is this the most pointless superhero trilogy ever made? In a way, I thought I could make that entire question a little bit more exciting by asking if this Sony vs. Pile of Pooh Venom trilogy is the most pointless big budget Hollywood trilogy of all time. But then I remembered off the top of my head at some point in our society, 40 year old MILFs were so bricked up that it actually gave Hollywood the great idea to spawn a trilogy of half baked and half assed, no pun intended, perv movies that were too afraid to take it that far and actually made bank despite that. And I'm sure there actually is a name for this type of genre of books in the book reading community, so don't come after me. Not to mention the Disney Star Wars sequel trilogy that pretty much crippled what was once one of, if not the most profitable and marketable IP that has ever graced our audience to studio relationship, and the Human the Centipede trilogy. Some of you might just now be finding out that some producer's head was so far up their own ass that they actually talked themselves into greenlighting a trilogy for that franchise, but that is all I'm going to elaborate on that. The point is, is that Venom 3 The Last Dance is just a bad, disappointing, and overall unimpactful and forgettable ending to a character that, if we're being completely honest, was the only reason why people should give a shit about what Sony was cooking in the oven when it comes to this universe in the first place. And while usually I, and I assume that the majority of the audience in this instance, that go to these crippled and damn near lifeless Sonyverse movies, have the mindset of watching an out of date, out of style, but at least a fun, streamlined, and semi-enjoyable ride with a D-list comic book character. But in the case of Venom, a fan favorite character and the crown jewel of comic book characters in the forever shrinking pool of characters that Sony has left to play with, I guess I just expected a little bit more grace, care, respect, and nuance would be given for the final movie of a trilogy that kind of carries the entirety of this universe. But I am just a bloke for that. And the worst part is, is that yet again, I feel like the audience cared more about this character, this franchise, and this world overall than the bloke writers and producers that actually have their money on the line and whatever the word reputation holds anymore in the desolate wasteland that Hollywood is nowadays. No, what the heck, I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> But for how poorly planned out this whole Spider-Verse without a Spider-Man has been, including the Venom trilogy to a degree, Venom 3 has found a way to encapsulate all of those issues into one movie, really showcasing Sony's true skills on how to make yet another boring, incohesive, disappointing, underwhelming, forgettable, and otherwise pointless shit on a screen movie that you the audience end up forgetting about the time you and your mates get to the parking lot and ends up just being another generic early 2000s entry into a universe that still seemingly has no path towards audience or financial success. And while I don't say these criticisms with as much animosity in my heart as my words might suggest, that simply is just because I don't really care about the character of Venom one way or the other, but for others in the audience, that is not the case. And again, Venom The Last Dance just feels like an underhanded and borderline non-existent thank you to a fandom that I think deserves a little bit more than what was given. And while that's not Tom Hardy's fault, seeing how he was the only glowing light in this sunken place that is the Spider-Verse without a Spider-Man, I don't know, walking out of this movie just really rubbed me the wrong way. Anyway, let's talk. Oh, so side note. In order to give this movie a little bit of credit for creativity, it has been a while since I have seen the McMuffin trope actually play out as the main character itself, unless the Hangover movies count. But Venom 3 follows the events of Venom 2, kind of. And while understandably, you more than likely do not remember anything from that movie, it's not like any of those events or character development really come into play anyway. The movie opens up with a full-on Anthony Hopkins-style exposition dump, a style of dialogue you, the audience, should get used to if you legitimately are going to see this movie, seeing how most of the characters interact and talk to each other as if this is their first time on Earth with only the script in mind. But nevertheless, an exposition dump detailing the origins of our new villain, Null, a villain that I predict we will literally never see again in the new big bad of the Spider-Verse without a Spider-Man that aren't the producers, who finds himself locked up in a symbiote-held prison for undisclosed and, I guess, irrelevant reasons. With the McMuffin called the Codex being the only key of setting Null free, an incredibly stupid and specific McMuffin that is formed when the human host of a symbiote is brought back to life, if you remember when Eddie died, you guys can go ahead and comment down below, 
Eddie and Venom find themselves on the run as Null sends, admittedly, yet another badass alien design to come out of Hollywood. They've kind of been on a roll with that lately. To hunt down the Codex and set him free of his prison, and while there's obviously no way that a relatively simple and streamlined plot thread like that could fill up an entire runtime, even one as short as your average Paw Patrol cinematic experience, there is a scientist subplot thrown in there with characters where I could not even be bothered to remember or look up their names, all manifesting into one final act that feels so far from the last dance that it was advertised as, that you the audience could really mistake this entire thing as a fan film, or even an extended version of what you would think a first half of a movie would be like, but nope, this is really all that you get. And because of that, obviously one of the biggest problems when it comes to this movie is really just the lack of Venom overall. I'm not quite sure if it was a budget problem, or if it was just a classic case of Hollywood prioritizing the actor over the character, but the decision to make the form of Venom himself the MacGuffin was a pretty Toontown decision, and a decision that not only limits the character's screen time of the character that the majority of the audience is paying to see, but actively limits the action set pieces and how bombastic the sequences could really be for a franchise that kind of relies on that aspect of movie making. But in order to talk about some of the good before we really get into the slander, as I mentioned before, I have to give an incredible shout out to Tom Hardy, for a role in a studio that gave him absolutely nothing, he really gave back everything, and without the charm, charisma, and genuine humor and comedic moments that radiate from the guy as natural as drinking water, it is a true testament to his talent and ability as an actor in order to bring a character to life that really gave this franchise a fighting chance in the first place. Oh, and again, those alien designs were pretty badass, and I wouldn't be mad if someone of a higher class of creativity and cinematography adopted that alien design and made it their own in a more competently made movie. But in all seriousness, without the buddy cop dynamic of Eddie and Venom, there is really not much that this franchise has, or now had, really going for it. It isn't a franchise that really had an overarching plot, it isn't a franchise that had any interesting side characters, or really any characters besides Mrs. Chen that Eddie or Venom really had any kind of character relationship or character dynamic with. A franchise that couldn't be bothered with any sort of world building or time frame except for a throwaway line in this movie, a franchise of underwhelming stakes, non-existent tension, and simple lack of direction. And because of that, Venom 3 The Last Dance really suffered as an entry into this universe and to the end of a trilogy for a character that could have really gone out of a banger of a bad but good superhero movie. And that really shows the state of affairs that Sony's Spider-Verse Without a Spider-Man really stands right now. Poorly planned and underwhelming to a T, which is pretty dumb seeing how Andrew Garfield is right there waiting on the call for Sony to hand him the blank check. But with this lackluster treatment and forgettable ending of what I believe was the most esteemed character Sony had in the chamber, I don't really see a course correction coming anytime soon. Good luck to Craven, I guess. So in a ranking tier list that is still a name in progress, Venom 3 The Last Dance was shit on a screen. I don't know, there's really no reason to even sugarcoat it. You'll be forgetting about this movie by the time you watch the next video YouTube recommends to you after this video. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.